Yeah. Uh. Oh yeah, make sure you subscribe, you know. Subscribe please and hit the bell. What's good y'all? This is HYBRYD 803's World and I am Hybrid 803. And today I want to talk to you. This is how Hot 103.9 abandoned me too. All right? Today, earlier today, a couple of hours ago, um I just got a uh, in inbox um from one of the personalities um that was on that video um and I'm just cuz I don't want I don't want no you know no disrespect or no you know no nothing to come off uh wrong to that person you know what I'm saying because that's not that's not what my vlog was about but they um inboxed me and said they were offended um by what I did saying that they invited me up there and other local artists to come by, and this is what they do. Well, this is what I do, and it's very disrespectful, and I'm wild for it. Now, you know, like I, I still stand by what I say in, you know, in the inbox when I responded, you know, I still got, you know, I got respect for y'all and everything, and I'm just telling my story, you know, and you got to be real, you know, in Columbia, South Carolina, the radio was not supporting the scene in Colombia, the music scene at all. Like, you know, um, they had, uh, uh, we had, a, a like a while back, we had a, um, a Sunday show. It was on, I think it was, was, was a hundred point one, the beat at the time they had gave us, you know, a Sunday, it was an hour full of, um, you know, Carolina music, which was cool. You know, we had that. They were trying to do that for a while. Then they even had little awards with it and everything. I think Venom, yeah, Venom was running that and everything. And it was cool. It was great. Then they took that away from us, you know. And when they took that away from us, shit was basically, it was like, a, it was nothing. It was nothing going on. No way, you know, to display, you know, the Carolina talent. We had TV shows back in the day, all that. But, you know, after the whole little situation, you know, in 2005, when when the city got shut down and shit, you know, and the feds shut shut the city shut the city down and shit like that, shit got fucked up. So all the shows went, all you know, a lot of the businesses, the magazines and shit, all that shit went, and you know, all we had left was really, you know, out of all that at the end when it said and done, all we really had was that one hour after, you know, as the years when the when the scene was dying. Then they took that from us, you know, and over time, you know, we developed this thing you know out you know from from artists that was out here we developed this internet radio station that was raw and we called ourselves too real for radio because we were too real and and that's that's what it was we was we was real we kept it real uh with the topics we talked about and we really was about helping the carolina artists like at first and at first it was it was helping columbia artists let's just be let's just be straight up at first it was about helping the fucking columbia scene it was about the columbia scene and we was putting on you know we did everything we could for the club at first we was um we we was playing we was playing music you know on the radio station you know and then we stopped doing that then we had started uh we we started putting cats uh songs on mixtapes. We would put mixtapes, and what I mean by when I said, if you remember in the video, I said we had five hundred stores. What I would do, cause that's what I did. I got the stores. I would go to different mom and pops or gas stations, and I would set up. You know, um, I would probably do um, you know, um, um, consignment. I would give them the um, the damn uh, the, the the music. We would have music and videos. You know, what I'm saying we would have we would mix in Columbia music. You know, a good hot ten tracks with some radio shit, you know how it go, and they can listen to us and listen to, um, you know, the, the industry shit, we mix it up, you know what I'm saying, we had different CDs, we had R&B CDs, we had R&B artists, and, you know, uh, R&B songs, all that good shit on that one, we had, you know, um, the hot, the hot ones that's just hot on the radio and the hottest ones in our hoods, and, you know, we just, we did it like that. You understand what I'm saying? We put that out there, you know, in, in, in plenty of stores in Columbia. You know, we got like, you know, it was, it was over a hundred stores in Columbia. You know what I'm saying? So then we started, well, it wasn't, it wasn't over a hundred stores in Columbia. It was like, it was like what? And I'm, it was like what? Like, it was probably like, like 60 something stores in Columbia. Then after that, we expanded out of, you know, then we expanded out of Columbia and we just started getting other stores, you know, putting, putting the, uh, 
the product in there on consignment, having people come by and, and, and when they buy it, we will come back, you know, and we will advertise it on the internet. You know what I'm saying? We will stay advertising. We will stay, um, you know, going to different events, advertising, um, posting, um, you know, sponsoring fucking, you know, whatever. We stayed advertising and marketing that shit to get the word out there um, for the Carolina scene. And at the time, nobody was doing that. And then we even spent money with the radio station. The person that was backing us financially... The person that was backing us financially spent hundreds, if not a couple of thousands of dollars with the radio station and advertisement dollars, you know, um, for not only uh, it was a cell phone store that we was advertising that we had, but also to advertise the Internet radio station. I'm talking about we went on the radio station and advertised our our Internet radio station paying them to advertise the local music because they wasn't playing it they just wasn't playing local music at the time you understand what i'm saying and that's what we you know that's what we did and when they came up with that uh when we started you know doing that with the with the radio i remember i don't know if y'all remember it um but it was it was a radio commercial i put up and it was like um playing the same artist over and over again that's not hot or something like that you know what i'm saying and, you know, Hot 103.9, they played it. They tried to edit it a little bit and whatever like that. And then they told us they couldn't run it. And then they didn't want to run no more ads, you know, for our internet radio station because now it was a conflict of interest. Even though we were on the internet first, you know, I'm not going to say that we caused them to get online. But, I mean, hell, I'm pretty sure they was going to do it eventually or whatever anyway. You know what I mean? Um, But after that, they just stopped fucking with us and just started advertising their online thing and doing their thing. You know what I mean? And they still didn't cater to the um, Columbia artists at the time. We still was doing that. We had that on lock. We had events going on. People was coming to our events. We had um, uh, people coming in. We was we was um, uh, we had people coming to our events. We had people coming in um, auditioning for, um, you know, shows we were putting together, doing things. We was, you know, we was trying to put on this put on for the scene and put the scene out there. And I believe the radio had seen what we were doing. This is what I honestly believe, because this is what I see. You know, I seen the radio, seen what we were doing, and somebody said, hey, well, we probably need to have some kind of locals come up on here. You know what I mean? So we can get the people to start looking at us again. You understand what I'm saying? That's how I felt like it was, truthfully. And that's what I'm, you know, that's why I said what I said. I never meant to disrespect nobody. I was keeping it real. I felt like when Too Real for Radio was doing, when we were doing our thing, y'all, uh, the radio, Hot 103.9, had wanted to, had looked at us and said, okay, well, these guys obviously know something and they got something going on. So let's try to look at their formula and see, okay, well, hey, they're fucking with the locals. Let's do it. You know what I mean? I, that's what I'm thinking. You understand what I'm saying? That's what it felt like at the time. Then also, too, when I said they abandoned me, they, um, they promised me that they were gonna um play my they was gonna get me to do an intro <clears throat> for the freestyle Friday play my intro and can play that over the re- uh, uh, over some continuing weeks and um they didn't they didn't provide you understand they didn't provide they didn't give me that you know they told me they was gonna spend my they said they was gonna spend the intro for me for some next couple of weeks they didn't give me that and um yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I remember. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what I you know that's that's the main thing I remember. They said they was gonna um spin uh, spin an intro for me for the next couple of weeks. They never did that. And um, you know when I did the interview, you know when I when I said King Caddy had um, you know kind of clowning me on that. King Caddy was clowning me on that or whatever. It was true. It was kind of like he was saying, "Well, you lost the first one," and he didn't acknowledge the fact that no one said that. You know, people called in and voted for old boy before he even started rapping he didn't acknowledge the fact that old boy had people just a swarm of army of people calling in that didn't even give that knew he was whack but just was calling in on that and on that note and they didn't you know they didn't acknowledge that you know because they had cats calling in before the shit even started like i told you i hate 
I hate I offended whoever, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm keeping it real. I do this, you know, I tell these stories on my vlog because this is what's going on. This is my life. This is what I see. This is what I'm doing. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to educate other artists that are in similar situations that's coming up from fucking nothing. And they don't know what to expect whenever they're going through a, or maybe they are going through something and they want to reminisce or whatever, or they're trying to relate or however. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying to put my story out there and, and help somebody else with my story. I ain't here to shit on nobody or whatever. I'm here to shit on the bullshit in the game. I'm here to shit on all the politics and the bullshit that goes along with the game and how, how fucked up the game is and how fucked up it is that locals, you know, aren't treated better than what they are treated by radio stations and TV. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and it is fucked up that the people in the state don't support the scene as well i'm not gonna just blame it all on you know let radio and tv but it's fucked up on both ends and we can't just sit here and ignore it like okay well you know let's just be happy go lucky and just be look i understand the business game is cutthroat and i understand all that but shit it can't be so fucking cutthroat to the point where we cut our own fucking throat and kill ourselves you understand what i'm saying but yeah I'm not, I, I didn't want to disrespect nobody, but I guess, you know, when you're telling your story, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't want to offend nobody, you know, but I'm just trying to keep it real, you know? So that's what happened, you know, and, and, and that's what it was. Hopefully, you know, I hate, I want to say this too. I hate the fact that it, it takes, you know, somebody to respond to you on some negative and they don't holler at you. You know, when you drop a song or when you do a show or when you bust a freestyle or something like that and be like, oh, good freestyle or something like that, or a nice song, or the song was whack, or I was offended by the freestyle. Why would you, how whack is that? Uh, or something like that. You know, I hate when it's like that. So, you know, I don't know. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I guess negativity is more powerful than anything else to get somebody's attention. So, um, I guess... With that said and done, I hate I offended somebody again, but I'm just keeping it real and telling my story. Um, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment and everything like that there. And um, until next time. What?